Hello, everybody, and welcome. It is once again that time, time for some Encore Overwatch. I'm Ariel. Today, I am joined by the one and only Wacky. Wacky, how are you doing today? We're doing good today. Ready to see some Div 2 action. And that's right. We have uh, UNCW Seahawks versus Peachy's Melons today. Um... A little bit of a difference than uh, the Division 2 match we saw on Monday. Uh, that match we uh, saw a real, real close contest between two teams that are at, currently at the top of our Division 2 table. However, uh, both UNCW Seahawks and Peachy's Melons are looking for their first win. Um, so today, a first will be had. Uh, but uh, definitely on the opposite side of the table. So it'll be very interesting to see um, how this match goes um, and to see if, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, ideally, I think I'd like to see it be, you know, as close as it was um, on Monday. That was a, a very excellent match between uh, two two really good squads who were poised to go deep in the playoffs. Um, whereas for uh, these squads, you know, they do uh, both have started 0-3. However, there still is plenty of time to kind of bring back their their season, if you will. Um, we're not quite halfway there yet, so, uh, you know, a little bit of a winning streak can, uh, you know, maybe get you some of that playoff action. So let's go ahead and take a look at our map set today. Once again, if you are joining us on Monday, you uh, got to see these, but uh, for those who didn't see anything since week one. We are uh, starting off on Havana, uh, followed by Numbani, and then Nepal. Uh, and these will be the minimum three maps we play, as this is a first to three match, as all are, are all, excuse me, regular season um, matches. And so just in case we get some uh, extra Overwatch, we'll head to Route 66 and Elios, uh, and then depending if we get a tie somewhere, uh, potentially Dorado is a final map as well. Um, so that is our week two map pool. And based upon the matchup we saw on Monday, uh, both of those squads really ran uh, kind of some like uh, what seemed to be their comfort comps. Um, but some things I would uh, expect to stick here are uh, some rush compositions early on Havana that will result in close holds. Um, additionally, seeing maybe some dive on Numbani, um, which is it's always a pleasure to be able to see, uh, you know, from map to map things that uh, end up being different. Um, and then with, you know, control point, you're a uh, good bet to potentially see Symmetra, um, especially on certain uh, stages of Nepal. You might see a Sim May, depending on what strategy, uh, maybe a little bit more Rush, uh, and maybe some Wrecking Ball as well. Um, so definitely plenty of variance here uh, that we can see. So, uh, Wacky, is there anything that you are particularly looking for today? Nothing in particular here. Um, just ready to see some two teams battle it out here on this nice Wednesday evening. Yes, indeed. This will be our last streamed match of this week, week two. Then week three starts on Friday. We're going to have a great match, and that will be a Division One contest between Manifest and Wichita Wolves Academy. Um and then we will also have a match on Saturday. Uh, that is has yet to be announced what match will be streamed. And then undoubtedly we'll get plenty of reschedules. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to stream some of those. Um, and get some more of that Encore Overwatch action. Uh, speaking of Encore Overwatch action. Uh, check out our YouTube, Encore Overwatch. We've uploaded all of our Week 1 VODs. Uh, so if you want to see the best of Week 1. Uh, just mosey on over, uh, and uh, tonight we'll uh, also be making a live Monday's match, uh, which, I mean, I would I will definitely be going back and watching, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was just that good. Um, so I would, uh, I would uh, offer that uh, you guys go look at it too. Just waiting here for the lobby to uh, everybody to get readied up. You know, the NA life. Here we are. I think we're going, folks. Yes, that's right. You heard it. We're initiating the match. We're heading 
to Havana. UNCW. Sniper. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sniper. Yeah, I was going to say Sniper Central map here on Havana. Maybe nice. see some double shield coming into this map. Uh, and then, sorry for cutting off, Ariel. Go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, to your point. Yeah, some a lot of great sight lines here. Uh, some of these stretches of road are very long. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see uh, if we get, you know, maybe a, a widow, a bit of widow action, you know, widow duels, um, or uh, if teams try to circumnavigate that. And it seems like they are going to try to. As we're going to see some rush. So again, the goal of the rush here: try to take as many team fights as possible on this map here. Looks like. UNC, UNC WC Hawks. They're going for the spawn cap rush. Five, Try to burn some clock here on the three, defense. Two, Defending in here. And being very sneaky, just kind of casually camping this door. Unfeatured, going to scout that out though. And obviously, I, I think you have to expect it at this point. Yeah, exactly. You have to expect it right now. And Reaper are making a good switch onto that fire. I'd be able to poke out that rush pretty easily. But they aren't really taking that engagement at the wall off. The rest of the attack room spawn here as we see a TP coming out for Big C trying to get some damage here. Fighting that D.Va but gets forced out and they're sent right back into their spawn. The Immortality Field does come out a little bit early so there is a small opening coming out here if you're Peachies. The DMEC also comes in for H2O and Reaper Aura building up slowly that barrage and <laughs> Big C just being taken out, just being chased down. Man. That's about 40 seconds out of the clock here so if you're UNCW you're looking pretty good here with the spawn camp. Yeah, it'll be very important here uh, for some coordination between the supports and this Farah. Uh, the Mercy boost uh, as a couple of kills trade through um, will be very key in getting some of these squishier targets. Ooh, cookout sauce taking out Reaper Aura in the air. That's your big carry hero. And uh, man, this spawn camp is going on for a while. They're going to start to build up to their ultimates as Unfeatured trying to roll it in and Big C trying to do some damage there on the side. The visor coming out from Wispy, but gets rocked. He doesn't die as the beat coming out from Chief Candy to re-engage here, taking out Wispy, taking out the fire and Teep on the Zenyatta. They're trying to look for a little bit more as the mines come out, but it just doesn't really do anything, just placed on the payload, but no one's really there, and they're just clearing it off. That's a minute and a half off the clock. Here we go, wall off on the ball. Doesn't find it as he's able to get out the Valkyrie and the Barrage and the Trance, all coming out at the same time. Managed to take out both supports, so there we go. Big opening there. This spawn camp is gonna fall sooner or later. It's just a Ryan and the baby diva left as they go down. Wispy in the back. He's gonna run for his life. And there you go. They had to invest a lot there, but they managed to break that spawn camp hold. Yeah, that was uh, the important thing. Uh, need to get that payload rolling. Uh, there will be at minimum one one more fight here uh, as UNCW Seahawks regroups. Um, but that was a very good stall, buying a couple minutes of time. Yeah, they bought a couple of minutes time here, but Cookout Sauce here has that blizzard. If you're a Sigma, you'll be fearing for your life as he goes for the flux, but will he get frozen out of it? The Hail Mary! Ult from the May actually does zone out Big C, but is traded out. The res coming out for Big C there, and they're just backing up to the high ground. UNCW Seahawks is. The visor coming out for Wissy, trying to find a kill. Managed to get Big C again. And Teeb on the Zenyatta. He's going down. He's going for the pharmacy now. He's trying to 1v2. He gets taken out by Reaper Aura as the payload. There's a fight on the payload as the mines come out from Unfeatured. And another barrage built up by Reaper Aura. Oh, but he's taken up by Cookout Sauce here. There's still a lot of members alive here as reinforcements has arrived they're coming in it's only the tanks and the mercy and they're just backing away slowly both teams look like now they're at a standstill as wispy again taking out big c the slam coming out tried to get the rock tried to stun it from marcelin but doesn't get it unfeatured just there and it's looking like another team fight win and there's only 30 seconds left on the clock that's the importance of why you hold up so close. Peachy's Melons had to burn so many ultimates, and so when Wispy um, finally had that attack visor back up, uh, T did not have that transcendence because they had used it the previous fight. And so, you know, as soon as they found both of those supports, it was game over. Yeah, it was game over. Speaking of game over, window coming out. They're trying to shut this game right now. There's only five seconds left. 
Will anybody able to be able to touch? They're just gonna fight over this payload. They do manage to get a touch, but there's so many members down. It's only the oh, it's only the baby diva, and he's just gonna get massacred here by Cookout Sauce. And wow, what a dominant hold there by UNCWC Hawks. Yeah, didn't uh, UNCW really never looked like they were uh, any any danger. Uh, just able to bring fights to Peachy's Melons, uh, and they were able to fight on their own terms. Also, always had gr a great uh, amount of ultimates in the bank, uh, and you know, Peachy's were always just forced to spend unreasonably in each fight, and just never had those key ultimates or abilities uh, when they needed them the most. And also, that looked like there was a little bit of a desync with their tanks and their DPS. You know, their tanks, like especially the ball. I'm, I don't remember who the ball player was, but he would go in, and then their Pharah wasn't in position, or their Hanzo was in position, and they were just desync. They were just mistiming their cooldowns or the engagement timings, and you know, it cost them. It cost them that map because once you those tiny mistakes, they all add up. And that's really big too, especially when you have a support like Zen uh, with a powerful Discord orb. Something I was going to try to mention early on was with the Far Mercy, if Zen could get like a Discord onto a squishy target, um, that, that's a lot of danger for just a roving Lucio or even Batiste without the immortality field. Uh, but they were never able to sync that up. And additionally, uh, with a Hammond, um, able to help displace and then, you know, maybe you could place your Discord orb then. Um, but as you said, just not able to happen. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have the same thing. They're gonna try to go for the May spawn camp again, but then a little bit different. They're gonna UNCC WC Hawks. They're gonna go for the Winston Ryan. So a little of a pub stomp combo. But HGO coming out. He does do a tactical feed. Opens it up for the rest of his team as Wispy gets the big kill onto the Baptiste, and they're just gonna go finish off the May and that Diva right over there as we can see against the world. Trying to run from his life, but no, you can't escape Banana. Banana's coming for you. There we go. Easy team fight victory, just breaking the spawn camp hold. UNC WC Hawks showing us how it's done here. Yeah, H2O buying quite a bit of space there. Uh, as it felt like Peachy's Melon just kind of for focused on the Winston, uh, but kind of left unfeatured uh, out to dry. There we go, Wispy coming in. Does go with the Winston, the bubble a little bit missed time, but they go down and he goes down with the ship. Both members a little bit off with their cooldowns there as the rest of the members, they're just gonna back up here for UNC WC. Yeah, UNC WC Hawks. As Banana going down, the Maywall try to cut him off. Doesn't really find too much, but they do manage to kill Cookout Sauce here, and that's a reset there. So te another team fight win here. They manage to stabilize the defense here. Yeah, not all is lost, uh, though for the attacking sign, they have two and a half minutes left. Uh, and a couple of ultimates here coming up. We'll have four for this next fight, except oh! for that. <laughs> Never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me feature here, but with me, he's turning it around. He's gotten two kills. There's team fights happening all over his so That's Banana going in with the Shatter, but Marcelin trading out for Custard there. It's a 2v4. It looks like there's a dragon coming out to the Palo just zones it out there. Sunline trying to touch the point. The Viva Bomb from Marslin just trying to get back into that mech as reinforcements has arrived. But Sunline doing a great job of stalling, does manage it. Oh, but Cookout Sauce logging Reaper Aura here. And the Coalescence should be the finisher here. It's not enough as the beat just for good measure. They can't touch the payload. And there we go. UNC WC Hawks with that double fire strike. Opened up that last team fight there. Just cleared out Havana. Play of the game. Play of the game. Featuring unfeatured. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Look at this. Fire strike right to the window. Perfectly timed. Bang, bang. Fortunately, it wasn't enough, though, as uh, UNCW ended up taking that fight. Um, and uh, if you've tuned into our other streams, a lot of times, as soon as you see something like that, uh, the the rest of the the squad is just like instantly mobilized and on to the next target uh, but it felt like that didn't happen there with peachy's melons uh, it felt like they were kind of just you know waiting for the rest of the fight to come to them and and ended up resulting in them losing that yeah it seems also that UNT WC Hawks they've 
really practice this rush comp as well, a little bit more practice than maybe Peachy's Melon. You know, they come, they came in with their their Winston Doom strategy. You know, they go in their back line as the rest of the core. They go in as first. Uh, they go try to follow up. Um, so they look really practiced on these comps here. So let's see. It's gonna be interesting what they decide to do on the Bonnie, which is uh, more of a dive centric kind of map as well. So let's see how they adjust here. And so we're going to roll right in to Numbani. Peachy's Melons, I believe, will start off on the attack, so they'll uh, stay red. But there is a, a substitution, I believe. Well, no, actually. Is it a substitution, or are they just swapping it roles within the line? not a substitution. Okay. They are just switching. <laughs> I don't think that needs to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> but if, what? if they just want to be traded one for yeah, two, then, uh, <laughs> then sure. <laughs> All right. Both teams are now ready, and here we go. Ah, uh, Numbani. Numbani. Initiating match. And here we are. You know, rolling just through more streets. Yeah, rolling <laughs> through more streets. They just never cleaned up this airport. I'm just, you know, it's been years. It's been it's been over four years, and it's been so long that wanna... Doomfist is now a tank. Yeah. <laughs> he's, now a high, he's now he's now a hybrid between Winston and Reinhardt. You know, and <laughs> you'd think a, an advanced robotic city would be able to clean up this airport after four years, but no. The cleaners must be. On vacation. A very, very long vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Just exploring the world, I guess. Not a very big airport either, I must say. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what uh, sort of planes are flying out of there. Or maybe it's not even planes anymore. Just get a flying car. and. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Maybe, do, maybe it's just rocket ships at this point, because I don't even see any runway near the airport. So it's, it's also in a very condensed spot. Not a... Not a very great positioning of where you put an international airport, but here we go. Enough talking about airports and planes. As uh, we got a dive coming out here for Peachy Melons and Echo as well, and then a little bit of a less traditional tank lineup here on Defense Nobani as we have Banana on the Sigma here. All right, here we go. Peach Melons probing it out as we have Big C going to try to flank on the other side there. Has to, gets his forced recall early. He's going to die for his sins. He's going to fall off the map, actually. Well, that's not a great start. Here we go. That's the dive team just sitting down here. And Reaper Aura just poking, trying to find something. Not really doing anything. They're going to wait for Big C here on the Tracer here. So they're just going to chill as Unfeatured. Going to try to take a little bit of space coming into this attack. There we go. Just probing. We should see a dive shortly here. Marcelin looking, looking, running away, and Big C going down again. Two banana. Unfortunate timing. This team just needs to go here, Ariel. Yeah, taking a long time to set up. It doesn't seem like they really have a strong presence as finally uh, Marceline going to try to jump in, but uh, immediately gets sent back down. Yeah, immediately one HP, but the good news is Reaper Aura does is building up to that Echo Ult, and Teeb is building up to that Nana. That's gonna be the big ultimate here. Sunline also has that Valkyrie. Let's see if they can actually engage. Just a long dive coming in, trying to split that Hanzo, but no. Kugasa just mailing to the face. The, the Echo copy does come out from Reaper Aura. Gets the kill and the rest from Marcelin as well, but they trade out Big C dead again, but Wispy killing himself probably with that Helix rocket. There's trades just happening all over the shop. Reaper Aura finding another kill. He's just doing being a menace on that Echo Copy Sigma there. There's only two members left remaining. It's only a matter of time as the break going down for Chief Candy. It's only Banana left standing one man against the world, but that one man is not enough. And that's a first point cap there by Peach and Melons. See, good things happen when you just go. Uh, even yeah. your main tank died. It, it still didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Tactical field, if you want to say. It yeah. opens it up for the rest of the team, right? Absolutely. It's all yeah. about the space that you just bought. <laughs> exactly. And also just having Echo with a, a absurdly broken ultimate. That kind of helps. That kind of helps too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if uh, Big C can redeem himself. No. He died uh, three out of two team fights, but let's, let's see if we can do it here as the boop coming out. 
from H2O. Not really finding any banana here on the low ground. A lot of team, again, a lot of not happening here as uh, Marcelin gets that nano going in, but gets booped back and then flux. Man, he's just not having a good time here. But the bump coming out from Unfeatured Man. Will he manage to find anything? Nothing. No dice, but just zone them out. They're now just chilling on the card as the Valkyrie. Sunlight has built up another Valkyrie. Just trying to sustain the rest of his team. Going on to the supports here. They managed to isolate that break. They do get that kill onto Chief Candy as the Primal come in out from Unfeatured. He's juggling, trying to find something. He does split off Banana. He's on the payload. He's split from the rest of his team. It's not looking good for Banana. He's going to die shortly, I'm assuming. But the high noon from Cookout Sauce just zoning them out from that corner and just plays slow here. The bomb from H2 just to get back into that Mac doesn't find any kills. And here we go, the rally from Chief Candy. This is going to be big. Just gonna zone out the rest of Peachy's melons here. And they're they're reeling. It's now stabilizing from both teams. As there's some off-angle H2O diva there as he goes back main. And now Marcelin with that nano, but it's gonna be a lot to burn through that armor. And it's so close for He's just getting booped. All around, man, that is tough. There's just so much CC here and no kills are happening, man. This is just a stalemate from both teams. Wispy is anti N1 and HHP. They actually get the kill, but here we go. Echo copy from gets a Sigma. Marshland does go down though. Can he get that flux? Will be able to build Reaper or needs to get that flux before the timer runs out. He does get it. Oh, but he gets stunned from Cookout Sauce. What a great stun. Sun Lion going down as well. The bomb in the back, will it find anything? No, but both supports from Peachy's go down and Cookout Sauce just built up another high noon during that altercation there. And Unfeatured just chilling on the high ground. He's low. Will he be able to get out? But no, that should be it. Unfeatured's probably just gonna die here. Jump off the map, but whew! What a long drawn out team fight there, Ariel. Yeah, I lost track of how many uh, ultimates have been spent and generated within the, you know, just that one overall fight. Uh, it was almost reminiscent back of the GOATS days where, you know, you know, you could use all 12 ultimates and still be in the same fight. Uh, but maybe not not that extreme, but... Yeah, maybe not that extreme. You know, there was just a lot of CC, couldn't really find anything here, but uh, both teams just running it down mid, you know, just taking a battle here. They need to actually engage as they finally go in here to try to kill Chief Candy on that break. The bomb comes in, doesn't find anything again. Big C gets a kill onto Custard here. It's only H2 on the point as the rest of the team are just so far back. H2O is just fighting desperately to try to find something, but no, the rest of the team is just so far back. Chief Candy trying to touch, but no, doesn't get there as they finally cap that second point there. And once again, when they finally were able to gain some space there, uh, Peachy's Melons able to do some good work. Yeah, they finally managed to get that space, like you were saying, as uh, issue getting back that, that, <laughs> getting his mech back. But really, again, not a lot happening. Both teams kind of, it looks like, just afraid to go in here as we got Marshall onto that Nano, gets Flux away, and the High Noon. Oh, but Wispy in the back, trading out, gets the it's the Ana. That's a big trade, but no, the res coming out as we have the Echo Copy just getting completely nullified. The rally from Chief Candy just gonna stabilize the defending team. A lot of armor added on. Just can't find anything. Cookout Sauce getting a kill onto Marcelin here, and they're just reeling as Peachy Mounts has to back out, and that's a minute and a half left remaining on this attack. Looks like Peachy's gonna switch off the Winston onto the Reinhardt. I was about to mention maybe uh, switching from the dive here for this last point. This always has been more of a uh, brawly type of point, especially with these uh, narrow entryways. Uh, kind of hard to make it through as dive. Yeah, it's a hard. So a pretty good switch here. They just need to work on building their ultimates as they did a, almost a full team comp switch here. Because he's already one HP, but he's gonna back out there just trying to make something happen they're gonna rush down that sigma but oh that's a big trade you're losing your baptiste and the pulse bomb coming in actually looks like big c was actually got pinned by marcel in there who had that pulse bomb attached to him man great team fight win there from the defender inside here we go the only thing that peachy melons have to work with 
is that diva bomb there they're gonna just run it down mid gonna try to make something happen here oh the mccree cook out sauce he fell down we'll be able to punish yes they get the punish the flux coming up plus the bomb it's not looking good oh but immortality field is a thing they do survive but it's not enough as they're all low hp they do manage to finish up the kills after the immortality field comes out and it's only seven seconds remaining i don't know who's gonna be able to touch here not looking good, yeah, there's gonna be no one left to touch, but at least you got it the third point there, Ariel. Yeah, definitely a, a better showing than uh, on Havana. Able to get at least two points and uh, part of the way through third. Um, but unfortunately, like, you know, as as so much time had been bled off, uh, they really didn't have a, a good crack at that final point. Um, ended up, you know, wasting a fight on dive and then switched off. And then, you know, by that point, uh, you just really had no tools to use. And UNCW had everything, uh, especially in that last fight. You could tell Peachy's really trying to press. Uh, but meanwhile, you had... Um, I think a Diva and a Tracer in the back line. Uh, you know, there's a Gravitic Flux lifting your team up in the air uh, and, you know, forcing Immortality Field to come out. And just really not a whole lot you could do there. Uh, UNCW controlled, you know, that last point pretty much um, as soon as it had been taken or, you know, from the point that hit, second point had been taken. And uh, fortunately not a whole lot you can do there. No, not a lot that you can do there. And uh, look at what we have here. We have an attack Winston Reinhardt here. And uh, a Genji sighting as well. So an interesting uh -oh. team comp here. Probably going to see the same idea that we have on Avano where Wispy and H2O. Oh, never mind. Wispy on the Tracer. Just deciding on which just flank kidding. hero that he wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> not oh, kidding about the Rhine, though. Not kidding about the Ryan. Yeah, they're going to wrap around all the way around. Let's see if they scout it out. They do scout it out, so you're going to find them out here. They're going to just go poke around, do a little bit of damage. Let's see where they decide to go. They're going to wrap all the way around. They're going to go to the high ground. That Brigand Ana, they need to run. Oh, no, they actually get on the sleep onto that Tracer there. Will they manage to kill him? No, their Dr. Mule has Big C going down again. Actually falls to a Banana Reinhardt swing. The dive coming out, they're trying to get onto the supports, but he's just... Issues just falling through the cracks here, but Banana, a long range pin onto Team, getting the kill, and they're just getting overwhelmed here on that high ground there. And another, ooh, that should be first point cap there. Again, a story of different attack angles. Uh, PG's Melon's just not able to contend with every angle that UNCW was coming from. Uh, you know, as an Ana on that high ground, I think the last thing you're expecting is a Ryan to come pin you. Uh, but that's exactly what Banana did. Um, you know, being insulted, you know, with a, you know, from a tank in your back line and the rest of their team in the front line, not a great recipe for go? success. <laughs> you know, it's either, you either get die to the front line or die to a random Reinhardt pin. Just choose how you want to die there. As uh, Wispy getting a pulse bomb kill onto Teeb there to start off this team fight as both monkeys are doing the bubble dance of dreams. Cookout Sauce killing out Big C again, man. Big C's just not having a good time on this map here. Here we go. H2O, he has that primal, so he could go aggressive. There's only four members left. That's the high noon from Cookout Sauce. Probably wouldn't be able to find anything. Just gonna back away. Slowly breaks out the Brig Shield here. Wispy! Killing Big C again, man. He was just coming from spawn. Just let this man play the game. As Reaper Aura, both DPS down, and they're not going to be able to touch the point. No, they do actually, but it's probably all for naught. As the Nano Primal, you've heard Nano Blade, but no Nano Primals. And you, will he be finding anything here? He's just trying to, he's trying to push them away, but doesn't get any kills here. Unfeatured just has that bomb. Oh, but he's taken out by Cookout Sauce. And man. That's another, oh, five and a half minutes remaining here just to take third point. It's not looking good if you're Peaches Melons. And not even just third point, just half of third point. <laughs> and uh, probably going to have one last crack at uh, defending this, but uh, as you can see, the tank line, they're uh, being, trying to be a little sneaky here. Yeah, they're doing a little bit of uh, the funny as the rally just to come in. Banana. Oh, that B is going to be so huge to be able to zone them so far back, and they're just going to be pushed off the point with no <laughs> oh, kills. No. There you go. It's UNCW bad. Seahawks taking 
map two on the money with a dominant time bank. Well, that's how you do it. <laughs> Who needs to win the team fight when you can just uh, assert your dominance through spacing? Great play there. Yeah, great play there. But, but man, uh, uh, so far, so good for UNCW. Uh, looking way more decisive um, and very, way more comfortable, really, uh, than Peachy's has. You know, Peachy's did have, uh, was able to have a little bit of success there, um, getting uh, past second point, but uh, just comparatively, <laughs> it was not... Uh, not very close. No, not very close indeed. And uh, honestly, if you're if you're Peachy's melons here, I feel like you're just letting UNCW Seahawks just dictate the tempo. They're the ones engaging almost all the time there. And if you're Peachy's melons, you just need to go in. You just need to take a team fight here. Can't be afraid, but gotta make something happen. Here. Yeah, and, and really, uh, when they had their success, it was uh, because their tank line was able to, you know, find some space or cause UNCW uh, to be reactionary as opposed to being, you know, proactive. Uh, but a really stark night and day difference uh, of attacks when you, you know, we saw UNCW taking that in blazing uh, time. Uh, you, their tanks were always pressing forward. Um, they always had the good positions and were establishing um, you know, what they wanted to do and forcing Peaches to take into account, okay, well, they're positioned here, we need to do this, um, and not really letting Peaches uh, play how they want to. Yeah, exactly. And even if the, the engagement timing wasn't absolutely perfect there from UNCW Seahawks, they're just, you, you see when a team just goes in and just tries to make something happen, it just opens it up for the entire team, especially for the DPS. You know, the tanks just soak up all the damage, and it opens it up for for all the DPS to work on something there. And you saw it happening on the money. Additionally, uh, something to note as well, uh, you know, with the tracers on both sides, um, you know, it, the faster you move, the less time those tracers have to pick your supports. Uh, and so plenty of times, I believe Wispy was in the back line, launching pulse bombs, uh, just harassing whoever they wanted to um, because PG's was just taking much too long. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to have both teams coming out with a, a rush as both teams going to come out with the sim as well. But Wispy switching off that sim, going to go onto that Tracer, guys. Yeah, I've been doing pretty well onto that Tracer as both teams going to brawl out. The bubble coming out from each early as both bubbles have been broken. Here we go. Ooh, a nice fire strike from Banana killing the Lucio, the Immortality Field out early. And man, they're just mowing down Peachy's Melons there. Custard already almost onto that Baptiste ultimate and Banana 70% onto that Earth Shatter as well. Decisive team victory there. Unfortunate uh, death there from Sun Lion. Uh, great pick from Banana, but uh, you could see that uh, as soon as Lucio died, Peachy's tried to press in, make a little something something happen, uh, but they weren't really fully committed to it and they just opened themselves up to a positional disadvantage. Yeah, they're going to make something happen as a Sim TP a little bit disjoints them, but that confusion has opened up an Earth Shatter there for Marcel, and they trade out Big C. Both DPS down on the side of UNCW Seahawks there, so there is an opening there if you're Peachy's Melons. Excuse me, the other way around there. So if you're, if you're UNCW Seahawks here, coming out here, you have that Graviton Surge from H2O plus that Dragons and Wispy just for good measure at that Pulse Bomb. There you go. They, they did the it. They hit Q. They comboed. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And now they're holding F. W. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're holding W. Big C going down again, man. But he did get the trade onto that tracer, but it looks like the tracer will be back sooner than the McCree here. They do have that bat window, and the banana has that earth shatter. Deep has that Baptiste window. They're gonna. Wrap around, Peachy's Melons are gonna wrap around here. They do get scouted up, Banana. 
No, I can see it. I can see in his eyes he wants that Earth Shatter so bad, but Marcelin's just not gonna let that happen there. He's just finding he's just mirroring him every single way. Will he find it? He's going to be strong. He wants that 360, but the, the Sim Shield is just gonna zone out his team. It's the high noon. The flank high noon from Big C gets two. There you go. And it's only oh Cookout Sauce is getting killed into Sun Lion. And it's only the Hanzo, yep, that's the Hanzo and the Zarya left, and they clean him up. But if you're UNC WC Hawks, you get 92%, you're happy with that result. Yeah, you've got plenty of time, you have plenty of ultimates, and if these don't work, you'll have, you know, the the ability to generate more. Uh, right there, Reaper, Aura's uh, wall just causing a lot of issues uh, for UNCW, not really able uh, to utilize Banana Shatter, um, and Peaches was able to just... Uh, Ooh. Take that fight. Oh, big slam though, but gets completely nullified by the bat window and the beat. The pulse bomb coming out from Wispy doesn't get, doesn't land the stick as Reaper or Edge is beaming there on the back line. There you go. Okay, Peach's Melons winning another team fight there. They have to invest a lot of resources there after getting earth shattered, but at least they still hold on to that point. But UNCW did as well, uh, investing both support alts, I think, really at the start of that fight. Um, so, you know, it always hurts a little bit when you use both support ultimates uh, and come up empty. They will have the, uh, the big wombo combo of grav dragons, uh, so that will be what Peachy's Melons needs to look out for. Yeah, they're going to go in here with that Sim TP onto that back line. But no, they're just forced back as the Diva Bomb coming out, but no. Marcelin going down, the dragons there, the immortality field breaks, and they're not able to survive. Bixie does get a kill against Wispy, but he has to kill everyone there just to make someone angry, but no, it's just him. It's 7% remaining. Someone needs to touch if your peachy smell. It's gonna be all up the Sun Lion. Can you all right? No, cannot make it there, and there we go. UNCW Seahawks taking the first map of Nepal. Yeah, unfortunately not having anything for that Grav Dragons uh, proved to be the downfall. Um, unfortunately, I think really the only thing you could reliably, quote-unquote reliably try to do there is have uh, un whoever's on D.Va uh, just kind of try to trick the Zarya uh, into chucking out that grav, but uh, unfortunately was just not able to do so, and obviously you don't want to rely uh, on that sort of thing. Um, no. They went for the, it looks like they went for a Devo on play, but the other option I think they could have gone is perhaps rushing that Zarya, making the Zarya player feel pressured, and then maybe they panic grav and, the, and D.Va there, hard defense matrix there as they try to kill that Zarya. That's the other play they could have done, but... Just unable to do so there. As both teams are just playing Ring Around the Rosie as they <laughs> just actually switch sides as they're gonna actually continue to Ring Around the Rosie here. As uh, <laughs> There we go, we're actually gonna have to see a team fight here. As Marcelin gets that bubble, gonna take the space. They do have, oh man, they have the better positional advantage here as the rest of the team for, <laughs> they, yeah, they take the point here. They use their immortality field very, very early as well, and they're just trapped. They have to take a few team fight here. They need to go as Re Reaper are actually dying to that Lucio. Don't really see that very often as Banana has built an Earth Shatter during that entire time, and they're just wow. I have no words, Ariel, for what just happened. <laughs> UNCW uh, were just allowed to do to utilize like the, their compositional advantage better. Uh, Peachy's Melons never really pressed whenever H2O didn't have any bubbles. That's when their rupture composition is at its weakest, uh, but they never forced the issue. Ooh, the Earth Shatter is massive for Marcelin. Reaper are there to clean up that Shatter. There we go. That's how you take a team fight. Probably the first, uh, one of the first times we've seen a very decisive team fight uh, from Peachy's. A great solo play there. Um, from Marceline, get that shatter. Well, I, I, I shouldn't say solo because uh, Reaper Aura had to come in and finish it up. Yeah, he had to finish it up here, and they're trying to finish up this team fight with that death. Sorry, with that Baptiste window, just gonna zone them out here. It's gonna force them the other direction here. 
H2O building up to that grab as the high noon and the window's gonna zone them out! Oh, and they're just gonna be forced into that corner. The immortality fields come out. So the Sunlight does have that beat, but they all, oh, with Big C coming a little bit too early from the rest of his team gets taken out and they may not even need the grab here. As they're probably just gonna read, read this team by outright. They're kinda try to kill the Zarya. They managed to kill H2O here. No one's on the point, so they're gonna cap. It's only the baby diva left remaining. Will they kill him? Okay, out of mercy, they do kill unfeatured <laughs> onto the baby diva for no stagger. All right, H two O, having that graviton search, he just has to come from spawn though. He's a long ways away. They actually decided to pick him up this time, and there we go. Definitely important to have the uh, full six there. Yeah, important to have the full As H2, he's hiding there around the corner. We'll, yeah, they do scout him out. We'll be able to eat that grab. There's hard DM. There's no defense remaining. As Banana, he's on the flank. He's looking for the shatter. He gets Big C. But the immortality field spares the life as H2 and Custard goes down. So they're turning it around here, man. They're just trading blows back and forth over this point here. And they're going to be able to cap this point. Man, this this map is going to come down to who, which defending team can actually win a team fight here there's a lot of tools from both sides so this should be an explosive team fight coming in this next round Asio yeah, still has that grab uh so for peaches you probably want to force the fight early here see if you can get h2o to use that grab when either when they don't want to um or just have a decisive team fight Ooh, the reaper aura trying to make something out with that death one but it's got it up early and h2 just burns up the mech coming out there's, that should be an opening. No, oh, but the Diva Bomb remech will be able to land that grab, but no, issue doesn't need it. He's just gonna beam down the rest of the team as Chief Candy gets a boop onto Big C. He was misposition there. The high new just gonna zone them back. It's 89% if they manage to cap this. USC will just get it. The Pafty Swinder from Team, and man, they need to touch here. Reaper Aura is on the flank. Sunline gets the beat, but no. Oh, Reaper Aura is trying to get the touch. He does get the touch. Sunline going down. Oh, but he gets solo shattered on the ground. And it's just not enough here. That sh all she wrote as UNCWC Hawks takes Nepal and looks like they take the match. UNCW getting their first win, but uh, looking like they should have three or more there. Just a very dominant effort from UNCW. Uh, consistently had a game plan. Uh, and oh my goodness, <laughs> all the damage, oh my. Yeah, when you trap yourself in that corner, there's only yeah. one outcome that could happen there. <laughs> yep, and, and really that was kind of the story of this match uh, from Peachy's Melons. Just content to sit and uh, try to kind of react to what UNCW was doing. But he really couldn't. Uh, UNCW either was, you know, too quick uh, or they were just doing a better job of outlasting them and, uh, you know, forcing kind of whittling down Peaches until they were uh, a husk, uh, you know. And, and then anytime Peaches actually tried to do anything, uh, just really can't do anything as a husk. <laughs> Yeah, you can't really do anything. But you know, from you know, it's not all doom and gloom for Peach's Melons. They showed flashes of they could do it. They they actually won team fights there. They took some points off the board and um there's some points where I was thinking, you know, they're being decisive here. They could make something happen and then, again, they just saw they they're, they're flashes. Absolutely. No promise there. I mean, and that's definitely something to pay attention to. As you review VODs and things like that, you know, see the things that you did well uh, and just try to continue doing those things uh, more consistently. Um, I agree. It looks like uh, Peachy's Melons, you know, as the, the match wore on, they were slowly getting a little bit more into the flow of the game, uh, able to take away some team fights, and uh, definitely do have some good things to build on here. Um, so, you know, definitely very good learning opportunity uh, as they continue to look for their first win. Congrats to UNCW Seahawks here. And Peach Melons, you have something to work on now. We, yeah, there's a week of scrims until you guys play next. So, man, that was a quick and dirty match, I must say, Ariel. <laughs> yes, uh, very, very quick. Probably one of the, the fastest matches I've seen so far this year. Um, 
But you know what? That's okay. Sometimes, you know, you can't have, uh, you know, five five map barn burners every game, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but definitely still some great Overwatch played from both sides uh, and some things to look forward to uh, as we continue uh, and now head into the back half of the season. Week three starts on Friday. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what both of these squads uh, do over the next couple of days to adjust and uh, try to continue to make the push for the playoffs as you know, one of the top eight seeds uh, in each division. So that's pretty much all we have today for you. Appreciate you coming out and joining. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this match, and we hope that you will join us Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, for some uh, Division One action between Manifest versus Wichita Wolves Academy. Uh, should be a good match to see to start off uh, week three as we you know get into the back half of this season. You know, it's always a weird thing with these you know four week you know leagues it just seems like it's over so quickly um <laughs> but i i can definitely understand it as a player how that might feel you know decent is that you, know, you get a, a good amount of matches to play right but you know it's not yeah. like a three-month commitment where you're spending literally a quarter of your year <laughs> on this um you could definitely get Especially a, not a, getting a, paid right right yeah when it's kind of just a passion uh project yeah um, exactly just do it for fun, you know. You just play yeah. with some friends. You queue, you queue up together. You join a tournament. That's... You know, you still have that competitive. Everyone has that little bit of competitive drive, but probably not enough to make it to the big league. So, you try to you try to play some small tournaments, and there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, that's what it's about. Uh, so, we want to thank everybody for joining. Uh, hope you had a great time. Uh, once again, Friday, 8 p.m. Uh, you know. Assuming nobody gets rescheduled, uh, we'll see you then for some more Division One action. Um, for Wacky and everybody else here at Encore Overwatch, I'm Ariel. See you guys next time. <laughs>